In the name of God the Merciful. Hello. As I explained in the previous clip, in this clip I will explain the life and behavior of beef and dairy cows, and in the next clip I will go to the cows. If you love animals and enjoy these clips, don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, let's go. A cow is a horned, ruminant, and hornless mammal from the order of Zijsman, the family of cattle, and the family of cattle. The family of cattle includes the cow and its closest relatives such as Gil, Gajjao, Banteng and Cambodian cattle. Cows are raised by humans for meat, milk production, and use of skin for leather production. Another product produced from this animal is animal manure. Nearly 10,500 years ago, about 80 cows were domesticated for the first time in central Anatolia, Levant, and western Iran. According to an estimate in 2011, there are nearly 1.4 billion cattle in the world. In the upper jaw of the cow, there are no front teeth and canines, and there are only molars, and on the contrary, there are front teeth and canines in the lower jaw. The canine teeth of cows are like the previous teeth and are generally in the form of a regular row of eight in front of the jaw. There is a pair of hooves on each hand and foot of the cow. Research shows that cows understand cause-effect relationships very well, for example, they learn very quickly which button to press to get water or food when they are thirsty or hungry. Like humans, cows learn very quickly to avoid dangerous things like electric fences or bad guys. Cows are able to learn from each other's experiences, in this respect they are like dogs and slightly more advanced than cats. For example, if a cow is shocked by electric fences, most other cows will never approach the fences. Cows have a good memory and never forget a place or appearance. Their memory is particularly good at remembering the location of objects. They remember very well the routes they have taken, the location of the water wells, the manger, the best grass in the pasture and the place where their calf was born, and from this they are able to return home or find their calf after it is sold. They are used in auctions. The memory of cows is not limited to remembering places and routes. Most cows hold a grudge against those who have harmed them or their family and do not forget their faces. This is also true for herd members. If a cow is treated poorly or harassed by another cow from its group, it will become discouraged and may not approach it for the rest of its life. One of the researchers who has been monitoring the behavior of cows in a herd for some time says, cows who become grandmothers help their daughters in raising children, but a cow named Olivia showed her mother that she does not need her help. After being ignored by her daughter, Olivia's mother went to another part of the pasture and started talking to other cows and never spoke to her daughter again. Cows are very social and form complex social structures. They can remember more than 100 people from their group. Social relationships are very important to cows. They are constantly choosing their leaders. This selection is based on criteria such as intelligence, curiosity, trustworthiness, experience, and social skills, not based on size, bullying, force and pride. The degree of friendship between cows in the group varies greatly. 
Each cow has a number of close friends, while it has only intragroup relations with the rest of the group. They lick and treat each other to show their affection to each other. The longer the acquaintance period and the degree of intimacy between two cows, the longer the time they treat each other. The social structure of the group affects many of the cows daily activities. For example, during the midday nap, the location and direction of each cow's sleep indicates their social position in the group. Most cows are kind and very loyal to their families and humans who are in regular contact with them and treat them with kindness. Cows can express their satisfaction, interest, anger, and confusion by using different body positions and sounds. They mourn the death of their loved ones and even shed tears over their loss. Bulls are very emotionally complex and may worry about the future. Cows are ruminants. They're complex, four-parted stomach enables them to digest plant material and convert it into energy and important building blocks for the body. They eat hay, corn, soybeans, grass, wheat, and silage, fermented feed. They can use poor quality or unproductive pastures, but must be properly managed to avoid damaging the environment. Proper cattle nutrition can be complex and requires a combination of scientific knowledge, creativity, and good management. The amount and type of feed given to a cow, calf, or bull depends on its weight, its age, the milking rate of a cow, and the place of its pregnancy. Cows spend approximately 6 hours a day grazing and another 8 hours ruminating. A cow is an animal without seasonal reproductive changes, that is, it is able to breed throughout the year. The gestation length of this animal is 9 months and it is mostly a singleton, although twins, and multiple births are also sometimes seen. The probability of twins in cattle is 1 to 2 percent. After reaching the age of sexual maturity, which is from 10 months onwards, the female calf estresses on average every 21 days and is ready to accept the male cattle. A cow can live 20 to 25 years in a normal state. The first artificial insemination in these cows happens after one year of age. The gestation period lasts for nine months and a dairy cow gives birth to her first child at the age of two. A calf is usually born after nine months of pregnancy. Childbirth usually takes two to four hours, with the four legs coming out first and the head between the legs. A cow may sometimes have twins. If twins are from a male, bull, and a female, heifer, the heifer's calf is usually infertile. Infertility in free martin heifers occurs due to the transfer of hormones or cells from the growing male calf, causing the female's reproductive system to be underdeveloped. Calves are precocious, meaning they can stand and walk within an hour of birth. The calf should drink milk in the first few hours after birth. This special milk is called colostrum and contains antibodies that help the calf fight disease and stay healthy. Cows produce colostrum in the first 72 hours after the calf is born. Calves are weaned at the age of 6 to 7 months. The life of cows in industrial farms. Breeding cows are divided into two main categories dairy cows and beef cows, which are actually the offspring of dairy cows. The life of dairy cows. 
Unfortunately, what most people still don't know is that no cow gives milk automatically. All mammals, including cows, only give milk when they have a baby. In fact, milk is baby food. Because the milking period in cows is one year, in order for them to give milk regularly, they have to give birth to a calf every year. The life of a dairy cow begins in the nursery. Strong female calves that are born from dairy cows are separated from their mothers two days after birth and sent to the breeding section of dairy cows to take the place of dairy cows whose milk production has decreased after reaching puberty. There, they tap their ears, possibly heat them, and burn their horns without anesthesia with a chemical. Both scalding and dehorning are physically painful and their psychological effects remain with the calves for a long time. In the first months, a part of the milk from mother cows may be poured into a jar and fed to these calves, or artificial cows milk substitutes may be used to feed them. These calves are usually kept in individual cells until they are three months old, and after that they are usually kept in group stables. After one year, the female cow, which has reached maturity, is impregnated by artificial insemination. The pregnancy period lasts for nine months and the dairy cow gives birth to her first child at around two years of age. At most two days after the birth of the child, the child is taken from her and she, who is now a grieving mother, is tied to a milking machine. About three months after the birth of the first child, she is impregnated again with artificial insemination, so that after nine months she will give birth to the second child and have milk regularly. While she is pregnant, Every day she has to give the milking machine several times the milk that a cow would produce in the wild. A dairy cow gives birth to three children between two and five years old, one child every year, and each time her child is taken from her. Most dairy cows suffer from calcium deficiency and bone problems at the age of five years and are no longer milked for the sake of the industry and are sent to the slaughterhouse. Their meat is usually sold at a cheap price. Dairy cows spend most of the year or even their whole life in crowded and dark stables. Male calves born from dairy cows are usually not very suitable for meat breeding because of their breed, because they do not grow fast like beef cattle and their meat does not have the quality of beef cattle. For this reason, depending on the husbandry strategy, they are either thrown away as litter on the day of birth or killed by a shot in the head or hit with a hammer or sent to meat centers, gain weight for about three to six months, and then to they are sent to the slaughterhouse. Dairy cows are faced with many physical problems throughout their lives, their weight is high, so much so that their bones, which are made for much less weight, cannot support it. Most of these cows are limp or suffer from constant and severe leg pain. On the other hand, due to the heavy weight of the body and breasts, a large number of cows have heart problems. In addition, cows give milk several times the normal amount, up to 40 or even 50 kilograms per day most of the year. Their breasts are always painful and swollen, and infection and sores are very common among them. Another common disease in dairy cows is bovine leukemia. This disease is usually hidden in the early stages, so it is not taken seriously. 
The result of a research in 2007 showed that 70 to 80 percent of the cows in the state of Michigan are infected with leukemia virus. Although many studies have shown a direct link between consumption of milk from cows infected with BLV and breast cancer, the cattle industry ignores this data. Other common diseases in dairy cows include stumbling due to lack of magnesium, lung inflammation, intestinal diseases, bovine diarrhea, BVD, mauled fever, uterine infection due to lack of hygiene when the calf is born. Most deaths in calves occur in the first month. The main cause of these deaths are blood infections and intestinal infections. Pregnancy and Childbirth In order for dairy cows to have milk continuously, they have to give birth once a year, so they get pregnant every year using the artificial insemination method, while during pregnancy, they continue to be milked two or three times a day. After nine months, the most difficult part of the matter comes, I. E. Giving birth. You must have heard the famous proverb a cow gives birth to twins. This proverb originates from the fact that giving birth in cows is one of the most difficult births, but what makes the life of a mother cow so sad and unbearable is not the difficulty of giving birth. Childbirth is the first way. Sweet time of childhood. After nine months of pregnancy and a grueling birth, the mother cow begins to nurse her calf, not knowing that this sweet period will last no more than a day or so. In the wild, a calf eats its mother's milk for 6 to 12 months, initially as the main food and then as a secondary food. From the very first hours, a strong emotional relationship is formed between mother and child. For breeding cows, the sheet is most likely to return within the next 24 to 48 hours. Strong female calves remain there to be reared for milk production. Weak calves, male and female, are killed in the first days, and the rest of the calves are separated from their mothers in one or at most several days, and go to calf nurseries. Separating the calf from the mother causes a severe emotional blow to both. After being separated from their children, mother cows are impatient for a long time and search for their child's head. In some female cows, this confusion and mourning continues for a very long time. Even in traditional livestock farming, the situation is not much better than this, because after a short period of time, the calves are sold to butchers or meat production centers. According to the reported cases, some mother cows leave their territory after being separated from their calf and walk several kilometers to find their child. The painful end of dairy cows. After giving birth three to four times, milk production in lactating cows decreases and their bitter life ends in the slaughterhouse. The Life of Beef Cattle There are dozens of breeds of beef cattle. The most important of these breeds are, Angus, Hereford, Cherolet, Chianina, Maine Anjou, Limousin, Cemental, and Shorthorn. These are the breeds that reach the maximum weight and their meat has the texture and taste of Bob Mill steak and they are sold at a higher price. Of course, it is not only beef cattle that come from meat farms. As mentioned earlier, if the day-old male calves born in the dairy industry are not discarded as waste, 
they are kept in meat farms for several months before being sent to the slaughterhouse. Calves that are to be raised for meat are usually separated from their mothers no later than 48 hours after birth and brought to meat farms. The moment of separation from the mother is the beginning of the bitter path that these animals are doomed to follow. These calves are very agitated and depressed away from their mother. Some of the milk from lactating cows may be fed to these calves or even artificial milk may be used instead of mother's milk to feed them. Because these calves are weak and prone to infectious diseases due to not being with their mother, they are usually kept in solitary cells during the first three months. After that, depending on husbandry practices, they may still be kept in these individual cells or brought into group stalls until the day they are sent to the slaughterhouse. Many of these animals are deprived of natural light and open air all their lives. Even in some of these stables, the calves are tied to the bars of the stable so that they cannot even sit on the ground, and if they can sit, they sit on their excrement. It may be that in some other farms the situation is somewhat better and at times of the year the calves are taken to the pasture, to graze and move freely, but in many farms the calves see the sunlight for the first time on the way to the slaughterhouse. In a small number of farms, calves are kept in cramped stables that are in the open air. In this case, the calves can breathe free air, but here too there is no freedom to walk or search. Even when cows are kept in large stalls instead of in solitary cells, there is a severe problem of overcrowding. Raising cows in overcrowded stalls causes them constant stress because it disrupts their social hierarchy. Cows that are kept in groups with more than 200 members are always chaotic and often fight with each other because they are separated from their mothers too early, they do not have enough space and they cannot find their place in such large groups. Meanwhile, in some industrial farms, cows are kept in groups of 1000. In order to understand their anxiety and distress, it is enough to imagine that we are imprisoned somewhere with 1,000 strangers. Cows, like us, want to live with their family and acquaintances, and the stress of living in industrial farms makes them confused, scared, and isolated. Most calves are sent to the slaughterhouse at the maximum of six months. In cases where the calves are weak, this period may be much shorter. In many farms, the horns of beef cattle are cut off with chemicals and without anesthesia, and they are probably heated. A few long grueling journeys are usually written on each cow's forehead. They are usually born somewhere, raised somewhere far away and killed in a slaughterhouse far away. Their transportation is carried out in most parts of the world in very abnormal conditions such as extreme heat or cold and several days of hunger and thirst. Some of them die on the way. Although the law of developed countries obliges slaughterhouses to kill cows with confusion and anesthesia, the suffering these animals suffer in slaughterhouses is another story of pain. The suffering of animals usually begins long before the act of slaughter. These animals usually have long and exhausting journeys from the farm to the slaughterhouse. Farming may be in one city and slaughterhouse in another city, country, or even continent. As soon as they enter the slaughterhouse, they feel their ominous end, 
and sometimes they have to stay in this place for hours or even days until it is their turn to be killed. When their turn comes, they are led into the confusion chamber. Hearing the smell of blood and all those strange sounds of machines and their fellows, they try to go back, but they are pushed forward with a beating or an electric shock to enter the chamber. Percussion guns are usually used to confuse cattle. These guns do not have bullets, but they shatter a part of the cow's skull with an impact. This blow should be applied to a specific point of the cow's head to make it confused and numb, but since frightened cows try to run away and often dodge, and the workers do not have enough time to properly confuse each animal, in many cases the blow doesn't hit the right spot and the cows hang by one leg with full awareness and feel the pain of the head, and sometimes other parts, being cut off. It is not bad to know that even in many developed countries, the slaughter of pregnant animals is not prohibited, and every year millions of pregnant cows are beheaded while their calves kick them from the inside. Unlike humans, cows have panoramic vision, meaning they can see almost everything around them without moving their heads. However, their depth perception is only focused on a small forward view. This means that, while a cow may be able to see you next to it, it can't necessarily judge how close or far you really are. This may explain why a cow may startle when approached, even if you have been within sight of it for some time. Poor feeding management of cows can lead to shorter and less efficient lactation and increased calving interval. Cows have to calf to produce milk, and the lactation cycle is the period between one calving and the next calving. This cycle is divided into four stages. Early, middle, and late lactation each about 120 days and dry period which should last up to 65 days. In an ideal world, cows would give birth every 12 months. A number of changes occur in cows as they progress through the different stages of lactation. In addition to changes in milk production, there are also changes in feed consumption and body condition and pregnancy stage. After parturition, the cow may start producing 10 kilograms of milk per day, reaching a maximum of 20 kilograms per day about 7 weeks into lactation and then gradually decreasing to 5 kilograms per day at the end of lactation. Although her maintenance needs will not vary, she will require more energy and protein in her diet as milk production increases and less when production declines. But to recover the body condition in late lactation, she needs extra energy. Cows usually use their body condition around 12 weeks after calving to provide energy in addition to the energy consumed. The energy released is used to produce milk, allowing them to maximize production more than their diet. To do this, cows must be in sufficient physical condition to lose weight and therefore must use it late in the previous lactation or during the dry period. There are several obstacles to maximizing herd peak in early lactation. The most important of them is voluntary food consumption. At the time of parturition, Appetite is only about 50 to 70 percent of peak intake. Because during the dry period, the growing calf occupies the space and the rumen volume decreases and the density and size of the rumen papillae decrease. After birth, 
it takes some time for the rumen to stretch and the papillae to grow back. It is by 10 to 12 weeks that the appetite reaches its full potential. After peak lactation, cow's appetite gradually increases until they can consume all the nutrients required for production, provided the ration is of high quality. Although the energy required for milk production is less needed during this period because milk production is declining, energy is still important due to pregnancy and the need to condition the body as an energy reserve for subsequent lactation. It is generally more efficient to improve herd condition in late lactation rather than the dry period. Maintaining or increasing body condition during the dry period is key to ensuring cows have body reserves for early lactation. If cows calve with sufficient body reserves, they can cycle within two or three months after calving. If cows give birth in poor conditions, milk production will suffer in early lactation because body stores are not available for energy. In fact, dietary energy can be directed toward weight gain rather than being made available through the desired weight loss. For this reason, High levels of nutrition in early lactation cannot compensate for poor body condition during parturition. Nearly 50% of the world's meat comes from cattle. The foreign trade of beef in 2000 was more than $30 billion, which is only 23% of the beef produced in the world. The production of milk which comes in various forms such as cheese, yogurt, butter, and other dairy products, is comparable to meat. Cowhide that is made into leather is another lucrative business related to cattle. Some special breeds such as Holstein Friesen are used to produce milk. Milk cows are usually kept in special farms and cattle farms, which are special for milk production. Most cows are milked twice a day, which may be processed on the spot and turned into dairy products or sent to special factories for processing. In order for dairy cows to continue milking, they must give birth to a calf every year. If the calf is born male, it is usually slaughtered at a young age to produce meat. Lactating cows continue to produce milk up to three weeks before calving. During the last half century, milk production has increased greatly in order to meet the society's need for dairy products. Holstein cows in the UK produce an average of 22 litres of milk per day. There are many breeds of cattle. Depending on the type of use of cattle, cattle breeds are divided into meat, dairy, and dual purpose breeds. Dairy breeds include Ayrshire, Jersey, Guernsey, Brown Swiss, Frisian Holstein Frisian, Dutch Frisian, English Frisian, and White and Red Frisian and Kerry. Popular beef breeds include Galloway, Aberdeen Angus, Hereford, Shorthorn, Cherolet, Limousin, Cemental, Brahmin, Santa Ichtros, and Brangus. Nearly 6,000 years before Christ, with the change of human life from hunting to agriculture and following the development of farms, wild cattle invaded these fields and gradually humans were able to capture and tame some of these animals. Cows were domesticated after dogs, sheep, goats, and cats. At first, beef was used, but eventually man was able to learn how to milk cow's milk. 
Archaeologists believe that cattle were domesticated in Asia and the Middle East between 4500 and 6000 BC. Cow is a very useful animal and its milk, meat, skin, and physical strength are used. Bulls are also used for laying eggs, plowing and loading. Probably, one of the main purposes of domesticating the cargo cow was. The power of elephants, camels, and horses was used after cows. Thank you for being with me until the end of the clip. In the next clip, I will go to the sheep. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.